A dystopian future of a world gone completely mad, experienced by us through the eyes of two people from our time frozen and reawakened in a failed government military experiment. Perpetual military slacker working in a file room in a sub-basement somewhere, and from the private sector, a prostitute. This is none other than Luke Wilson, Maya Rudolph, and Dax Shepard, 2006, Idiocracy. Idiocracy is the brilliant, cynical, hilarious, dystopian future of a world gone mad, by political correctness and its opposite, weirdly enough. Complete social decay and breakdown. And yet, for all the years that I have been since I seen it saying, Idiocracy is a documentary, Idiocracy is real, Brondo has what plants crave, we are now living in a time post-Idiocracy already. Only about 15 years since its debut, we are living in a world that is worse than the one presented in the movie. And yes, Brondo, the thirst mutilator, has what plants crave. First, idiocracy is the perfect example of political correctness run amok. Everything is controlled by people that are slackers. People don't have to get a real education. Everybody's sort of assigned a job. Nobody has to really do the job, but you have to pay them. They have figured out in a good communist way, the way to keep the economy at least functioning is to force you to pay people that don't actually do the job, assign people to the job that can't even do the job, but you are required to pay them. People can't really be fired. They're given a job assignment, they do it, they have a little chip, they have to do it, they do it, they get paid whether they can do it well, and as a result, just as in a good, woke, wankery, communist dystopia, everything is falling apart from the utter lack of education, intelligence, common sense, skill, or ability. Whole skyscrapers are being held up by giant, oversized, rubber bands that appear to be stretched between buildings. The Dr. Lexus, <laughs> named after a product, which we see all the way through Velveeta and a million other products. People ignorantly just named after things they made up that they grabbed onto. This is the phenomenon of our culture, which is a little bit controversial to put in the movie because we see it right now primarily in certain ethnic areas with names that are sound effects, as Bill Cosby said, names like Velveeta and Placenta and Chiniqua and whatever. People naming themselves or their, their offspring after products, after words that sound cool, and then you end, wow. This is where you end up in this egalitarian society where the outcome has to be equity, where the outcome has to be the same for everyone, regardless of ability, it kills ambition, it destroys, it actually destroys the ability to learn. It's like trying to teach an old dog new tricks. Educating the young means that some people will rise to the occasion. By intentionally keeping them ignorant, most of them will not be able to learn things later. They acclimate to a culture that is vacuous and empty and, and lowest common denominator because that's the real outcome of Equity is not bringing everyone up to the same. It's bringing everyone down to the same. And the product of that can only be perpetual idiocracy, perpetual mediocrity at very best. And this is the world that Luke Wilson and Maya Rudolph wake up into. But something else interesting has happened is the second part of this. Liberals in the 20th and 21st century more than anything are upper class elitists. Even if they're not wealthy, the whole culture is one of, of superiority, believing oneself to be intellectually superior. This is why the liberal in America says we love all people and all people should be empowered except those spam sucking trailer trash that live in that and have a flag on the back of their pickup because they assume that they are so much better than you, any red-blooded, decent, patriotic American is able to reduce, be devalued by the liberal to being just trash. This is how liberalism operates. 
Now, what we see in idiocracy is that because they have imposed this weird equity and has lowered everything, ironically, they end up with the, equ the equitable, the egalitarian, as they imagine it, society, the false equity of perpetual idiocracy and mediocrity, but they end up with a population that that is, they like monster trucks. They like a lot of pornography. They're, everything's about sex. Everything's about, everything is the worst possible expression of your stereotypes about ignorant backwoods people or ignorant trailer park people or ignorant ghetto people. All of the worst possible stereotypes for ignorant people in all these places across populations and race and language groups in the world brought together into this e equitable, yeah, I want to say egalitarian, but not really, brought together by the idiocracy of the equity doctrine and dogma into this worldwide cesspool of everything that you ever thought was dumb. It is a world that if everybody had a pickup truck, it would have Calvin and Hobbes peeing on the back of it, where everybody is spending their time at NASCAR. It did not become what the liberal elitist assumed it would, that everybody, once things were equitable, would want to be just like them in their elitism. Instead, we get the world of idiocracy, where uh, Victor, <laughs> President Dwayne Elizondo Mountain Dew Camacho, former heavyweight champion of the world and porn star, and it is not clear in the movie whether he became president by winning an election or by winning a match. But still, we can say this about the people in idiocracy. They are not nearly as bad off as we are now. In fact, we are well beyond the, level, the stupidity level of idiocracy. In the movie Idiocracy, they have free speech. They actually throw around terms at one another jokingly that I'm not allowed to use on YouTube right now at this moment because it would be offensive. They actually know what their genitals are. They know whether they're male or female and they act accordingly. They are not nearly as bad off or confused as what communism has already wrought on us in our century. And so as much as it was obviously very prescient and forward thinking, in 2006, idiocracy was clearly like, this is where we're headed, no. Where we're headed is someplace far, far worse than idiocracy. Ultimately, what really works for the movie, though, is that Luke Wilson's character is sort of a perpetual, lazy, unambitious. He does not represent the cream of the crop. And having not been able to find a woman who was willing to participate in return for dropping certain criminal charges and making arrangements with her pimp, a man named Upgrade, who spells his name with two Ds for a double dose of pimpin. The military had recruited Maya Rudolph's character to go into the future. And Luke Wilson is so ignorant throughout the course of the movie, even though he is now the smartest man on earth when they wake up, he never figures out what it is that she did for a living, but rather is willing to believe the ridiculous story that she was a painter. And, and it goes from there. So not only do we see this world of the future where everybody is stupid, we see it through the eyes of a couple of folks that aren't as smart as we imagine ourselves to be. So we're already sort of expecting that they're not the brightest lights on the block. And we see them arrive at a future where they are the smartest people in the world. And they are the only hope to save the future world. I wish we had people that smart to save our time when, as I say, everything is much worse now than what was foreseen. I kind of would like to see idiocracy revisited from our time. Have somebody from our time frozen and go to the future and see just how bad it is. Of course, the thing is, again, because we live in more of a communist society, more of this equity society, which is anything but egalitarian, really, because we're living under this tyranny of ideas where you can't say certain words, think certain things, speak those thoughts aloud, you'd never be able to make 
a realistic film about what it looks like waking up from this future on the course that we're at now, where unless there's a drastic, drastic reversal, probably caused by a catastrophe such as a global war or nuclear Armageddon caused by a global war, without some drastic reversal, where we are going to end up is something unspeakably out of the dystopian work of Philip K. Dick, where children will be being prostituted and people will have no gender and everything will be legal and you don't dare say anything wrong about it. We're pet up, I can't say that word either, where 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 people who love putting people in the wrong way are running the world. We're there. It will only be magnified further on from here unless something drastic happens. But go back, enjoy idiocracy for what it is, quaint nostalgia about a future that we feared was going to be terrible but really is not nearly as terrible as what actually awaits us, in some ways that makes it even easier to laugh at and enjoy.